If given a Verilog code in an interview and asked to verify whether it is synthesizable or not, will you able to identify? Do you know which Verilog syntax are completely and which are partially synthesizable? Do you know which Verilog constructs are completely rejected by the synthesis tool? Stay tuned till the end of the video to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. Introduction. Here we will discuss the background of today's topic. Next, we will classify the types of Verilog syntax which can be used for synthesis. Next, we will go in detail for the fully supported Verilog constructs. Verilog constructs. Next, we will explicitly discuss about partially supported Verilog constructs. Now, this fully supported or partially supported is completely related with the synthesis. That means whatever code you are writing in Verilog that can be converted into a chip. Next, we talk about ignored construct. That means the constructs that are ignored by any Verilog simulator. Next, we will explicitly discuss about the unsupported construct. So, you must have a clear idea which are ignored. Ignored means even if you write, your simulator will not do something. Rather, ignored constructs means that whenever you use, when you use these constructs, the synthesis tool will ignore them. However, if you write any one of the unsupported constructs, what will happen? The synthesis tool will reject your code for synthesis. So, that's the menu for today in a nutshell. And we are done here. So, let's move on to the next slide. Introduction. Synthesis tool have difficulty to find hardware with exact delays. So this is a inborn problem of the synthesis tools and hence all absolute and relative time declarations are ignored. So whatever values you are giving annually, those will be ignored. All signals are assumed to be maximum strength of so signal strength 7. So this is a particular level when you use a synthesis tool from the manual, you will come across all these strengths. Boolean operations X and Z are not permitted. So, this is a very good thing you must know that although in a test bench you can use the X and Z, however, in synthesis you cannot use X and Z. Many simulable Verilog syntax used in test bench may not be synthesizable at all. So, this is a very important point. Must remember whatever you are writing in the test bench that may not all be simulable in a synthesized or a synthesis tool. The test bench code is well simulable, it gives output, it gives a text output as well as the graphics, but may not be acceptable by the tool. This you have to remember, and hence we are making this episode for you so that you are well aware what to use and what not to use for your actual chip design. However, for testing, many thing, many syntax you can follow and many corners you can go. Hence, your knowledge must be crystal clear between learning Verilog and using Verilog in VLSI flow. You might question that why we are coming across this particular episode after so many episodes. The reason is that primarily the series is intended for the learning of the Verilog. However, when your learning is done and you enter into the VLSI industry, what you will do? You will use the Verilog in the VLSI flow. That time, you will get stuck because if all these precautions, measures that are going to be discussed in today's episode are not disclosed to you, you will get stuck there. So hence, this episode is kind of a bridge between your learning and your actual work in the VLSI industry for the RTL coding. We are done here with this particular episode. So let's move on to the next slide. Types of Verilog syntax for synthesis. Let us make the classification here. First, here goes our total set of Verilog syntax. Now, this can be subdivided into four subsets. First one is fully supported construct. The next one is partially supported constructs. The third one is ignored constructs. And the fourth one is unsupported constructs. So, when you are learning the Verilog, all those four types or four set of 
constructs you must know and use. However, when you are coding for the VLSI chip, you must be well aware of the last two that is ignored constructs and unsupported constructs. And you must know the conditions of the partially supported constructs so that your RTL code or the test bench is standing good for the VLSI chip design industry. And one most important thing that I need to say here is that when you are going to appear in an interview for a VLSI company or any of the front-end design part, some obvious interview questions will come that you can face if you complete this episode. We are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Now here in this slide, we will give the explicit description about the four categories or four subset that we have just shown you in the previous slide. The Verilog constructs are classified as fully supported constructs. These are the constructs that are supported as defined in the Verilog language reference manual. So, the LRM is the main document that you should consult for all these subsections and their details. Partially supported constructs that are supported with restrictions on them this is very important. So they are supported for synthesis, but we do have some restrictions applied on each of them. And the conditions are different for each of the particular construct. Next, ignored constructs. Constructs that are ignored by the synthesis tool. That means even if you write all these constructs in your Verilog RTL code, they will be ignored by the synthesis tool. Next, the unsupported constructs. Construct which if used may cause the synthesis tool not to accept the Verilog input code or may cause the different results between synthesis and simulation. So, you must be very careful about the unsupported constructs and at max you should avoid them. When there is no other way out, only in that case for a test bench or something, you can use them but it be a good practice or a be good convention that you avoid all these unsupported constructs. And remember one thing, you must consult a up-to-date LRM for all of this taxes and their inclusion or exclusion for synthesis part. We are done here. So let's move on to the next slide. Fully supported Verilog construct. Here we are going in the explicit detail. The first one is the module instantiation with named and positional notations. Next one is the integer data types with all bases. So you know that there are different bases like decimal, binary, hexadecimal, octal, so including all the bases. We have the identifiers in particular list. We have more like sub ranges and slices on the right hand side of an assignment. Continuous assignments. We have all these symbols and operations. That means all these symbols and corresponding operations. We do have all these keywords like assign, procedural and declarative, begin, end, case, case x, case z, end case, default, disable, function, in function, task, end task. Also, we have if, else, else if, input, output, in, out, where, wand, or try. Also, in this list, we have integer, range, macro module, module, parameter, supply 0, supply 1. So, this is the exhaustive list of the fully supported construct. That means, if you use any of these Verilog constructs in either your test bench or in your tip level Verilog code, there is no issues either with the simulation tool or the synthesis. So, here we are done. Let's move on to the next slide. Partially supported construct. First, here we have the tar, flash and modulus operation. Now, what is the restriction here? When both operand constants or power of 2, only in that case it is supported for synthesis. That means when both operands, that means we have a tar right at left hand side there will be something and right hand side there will be something. Similarly for the division or the modulo division. So in that case when we have the both operands, they should be constants or power of 2. In that case it will be supported by the synthesis tool. Next is always operation. Only the edge triggered events are supported for synth. So here this is our just to map the left hand side to the right hand side. This is our mapping notation and it is not a very long code syntax. Next one is for bound by static variables and only use of plus or minus for the index. That means the incrementation count. 
Next we have posage and negage and they are allowed only with the always at the rate. So here we talked about always and talked about the triggered events. Now you can see these two are coupling to each other. Next we have primitive, n primitive. I think there is a typo here. There should be a e here. Table, n table. So combinational and edge sensitive user defined primitives are often supported. For this you have to remember next this particular symbol what is this it's an assignment operation limitation on the usage with blocking assignment you must be careful about this point next and nand or nor xor xnor buff not buff f0 buff 1 not 0 not f1 all these gate types are supported without x or z constant that means you cannot use x or z in their input output logic so without them they are supported for synthesis next these all operators you can see there is a huge list of operators are supported without x or z const again for these operators on the operand side or the output side you cannot have x or z operations here we are done with this slide let's move on to the next slide ignored constructs so here we will go in an explicit description of the construct those are completely ignored that means even if you use they will be ignored by the synthesis tool First one is intra assignment timing controls. Next one is delay specification. So, this is intra assignment timing control, is the kind of hash statement and then the delay value, right, coming here. And delay specification here, we specify like this only. Tailored, vectored, small, large, medium, all these constructs are ignored. You also have specify in this list. We talked about the specify block in couple of episodes back. And we have time. Some tools treat these as integers. That means some synthesis tool treat this as integers. Next, we have week 1, week 0, i z 0 and i z 1, pool 0 and pool 1. So, someone may pronounce them as i z 0 and i z 1. So, either of the pronunciation are correct. Next, we have the dollar keyword. Some tool use these to set the synthesis constraints. So, this kind of keywords. Next, we have the weight statement. Some tools support weight with a bounded condition. That means there should be a boundary condition. Here is the exhaustive list for the ignored constructs for the synthesis tool. We are done here. Let's move on to the next slide. Finally, here in this slide, we will talk about the unsupported construct. That means the synthesis tool will throw away all these constructs if used in your coding. First is the assignment with variable used as bit select on the LHS of an assignment. Next one is the global variables. Next one are these two operators. We have already discussed about these two operators. Next one is the constructs which are completely unsupported are CMOS, NMOS, RCMOS, RNMOS, EMOS and RPMOS. These are completely unsupported. D assign is also unsupported. Now, D assigning means that you are assigning some variable and then D assigning the value. This is okay for your code, but not for the synthesis tool. It is okay with the simulator tool, but not okay with the synthesis tool. The next one is F param. Next one is event, force, fork, and join. All those are also not supported for synthesis. Next, we have the forever, the while, and initial. So, you know, right, the forever and the while are the infinite loop. That means these cannot be there in a real system. And the initial block is also for initializing the circuit condition. In actual case, when your circuit is there in, in chip, right, the initial conditions are determined during the power up or power down sequence. So, that determines and hence the initial block or the initial conditions you are writing for your simulation have absolutely no value value in actual case because the initial conditions will be determined by the power up or power down sequence generally the power up sequence not the power down one next one is the pull up or pull down construct next one is the release and repeat next we have rtran tran tran if 0 tran if 1 rtran if 0 rtran if 1 so all these constructs are unsupported we are talking about the unsupported one in this particular slide 
we have table end table primitive and primitive these are unsupported construct so here we have discussed the exhaustive list of the unsupported construct and here we are done so let's move on to the next slide thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today